Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 2020 National Letter of Intent Signing Day Special. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Today's show brought to you by Ohio's 529 College Advantage Plan. Happy to have you with us, and we are about ready to introduce to you the latest class of Miami Red Hawks that have signed their National Letter of Intent to play football at Miami University. And obviously, in these days of COVID, we're doing things a little differently. Normally, we'd be live in the studio doing this, but we're doing it via Zoom. And join me, joining me via Zoom is the head coach of the Red Hawks, of course, head coach Chuck Martin. And uh, coach, a large class that we'll get to here in, in just a few moments. But a couple of questions, uh, first of all, about how things are going to work with a large class and the possibility of, you know, guys coming back, getting that extra year. Uh, I, don't, I don't think the fans actually know how all of that works going into next season. Can you kind of give us the overview? Yeah. So one, the NCAA made a decision earlier this year to not count this year as a year of eligibility for anyone, not just seniors, but anyone. So all kids have the same eligibility because they felt like going into this year, um, who knows how many games we're going to get. It would be unfair for kids to play. And, and obviously in Miami's case, we played as few games as they've been in the country. We only played three games. So um, what they've also done is given us a one year relief from the 85 scholarships, meaning any seniors that only had one year of eligibility to play that played this year and do decide to come back, those are extra on top of your 85. So they didn't give you an allotment. They just said, hey, your compliance person knows how many seniors had one year of eligibility if those kids choose to come back. So you can be over by two, four, six, eight, ten, based on how many seniors you had. Now, the, the, the caveat is next year we have to be back to 85. Mm -hmm. So I'll be starting the year with 85 scholarship players that have more than one year of eligibility, and you typically recruit. So the, the issue really isn't this year. The NCAA has put it in the rules that it's going to be okay this year. Uh, the issue is really next year when you're going to have less scholarships than you've probably ever had in the history of football. <laughs> um, so, again, things have a way tend, – tend to have a way of working out. Um, yeah. And we'll kind of take things as we come. But uh, awesome job by the NCA to, to, to not count this year against anyone. And, and, and again, for us, people have asked me about, like, was it worth it? Was it worth it? I said, well, one, it was worth it because for the mental health of our players and coaches alike, like, um, getting back at it was really good for all of us. Two, because it didn't count as a year of eligibility, obviously this was all bonus. So whether you got three games in or ten games in, um, we got practices in that we wouldn't have got in. It was like a giant spring ball. And, yeah, we would have liked to get more than three games in, but um, those were bonus games, and there was there was still some memories made in those games. And um, so it was definitely worth it from my standpoint, and we're very appreciative not only of Miami allowing us to do it, but also just the MAC uh, coming through and, and giving us – it was a shortened season, but it, it certainly was better than no season at all. Absolutely. Now, the other question I have for you, it has been a dead period for such a long time. And obviously, you can't go out and see the guys. You can't, you know, go out and recruit. How was it in putting together this class? I mean, I know you've been talking to these guys for a long time, but how was it to virtually put together this class? Yeah, it was not terrible. Obviously, with COVID hitting in the spring, um, we had nothing but time to recruit. You know, we, we weren't <laughs> We weren't doing spring ball. We weren't going on the road. Uh, we weren't having summer camps. We weren't, you know, so we had plenty of time to just focus on recruiting. You couldn't really develop your own players because they were all home. Um, the other piece is the vast majority of this class, not the entire class, but 85% of this class had already been to a junior day. So the, the wheels were already in motion. We had already started our process of recruiting. So it was more just finishing off that class. The next class will be the real challenge. Um, because, you know, we're dead at least till April 15th. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have not been out at all during the season like we normally do. We didn't have any of those juniors at camp last summer, which we normally do. We're not out in December and January, which we normally do. So the next class will be more of a how do we make that class work, and that'll be an interesting discussion for next year's signing day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now you, now you talked about, you know, you know, was it worth it? And obviously it was for so many reasons, but um, I don't knock on wood and everything else. We'll never have another stranger time than what we've had 
trying to get in a, a football season and somebody was saying, well, it would have been better to play in the spring. Nobody's going to be any different in the spring, I don't think. And, and you're trying to get this thing in now, I think, was the best option for the Mid-American Conference and Miami. Yeah. And again, once everyone else was in in the fall, it, it really – there is no argument anymore. you got to do it. You can't mm-hmm. – you aren't going to be the one league that didn't do it. That would have probably done – done damage that you know so once everyone once the big 10 went back in the pac 10 decided they were going or pac 12 whatever it, it became kind of you kind of have to try to give it a whirl um obviously hindsight's always 2020 but you know obviously the leagues that started earlier have have still had plenty of cancellations like everybody else but um obviously COVID hit a lot worse this last month of the season than the first couple months so they got more games in and again it, like i said i'm not it wasn't perfect this year and it certainly didn't, we, you know, we didn't get any, any catch any breaks with losing three games. Um, but like I said, we'll take whatever we got in 20 and, and, and grow, you know, the biggest negative for us is some teams got nine, 10, 11, 12 games in, and, and their players got better. Our kids had a less of a chance to get better. To me, that's the only, you know, our net, it, it is what it is for this year. And, and we're still excited. The kids didn't lose a year of eligibility. Some of those kids that could come back will go on to the pros. Some of the kids that could come back, you know, may do other things uh, because a lot of those kids are graduating. So you got to have grad transfer options and all that, you know, they're going to probably pass the transfer rule. So it's going to be a wild 2021 also. And if you, if you're good at being fluid and rolling with the punches, it, it'll be an advantage in 2021, just like it was in 2020. Well, that's what this has been all about is rolling with the punches. Let's get to the class uh, that signed their national letters of intent today, coach. And we'll start with the skill positions and why not start with quarterback from Plainfield, Indiana, Avon high school, 6'2", 200 pound, Henry Husson. Yeah. Henry, obviously the first thing is, you know, coming from that program um, is, is, you know, always getting a kids from winning programs. We talk about every year, Bake, and, and getting captains. But obviously, Avon, coached by Coach Bless, has been one of the top programs in the state of Indiana. So you're going to get a kid that you know has played in big games. You're getting a kid that you know has been coached hard. You're getting a kid that knows his field pressure um, because winning is very important there. So a lot of the things that you're looking for and that we've built our culture on at Miami, you know you're getting him. He can really throw the football. Um, he can also run it. Um, he's he's tough. He loves to compete. There's you know, Coach Plus was telling me about you know sophomore year he, he broke a bone in, in a playoff game and he talked his way back in the game and played like a couple more series until they really realized uh, you know. So he's he's just he's just very 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 tough, competitive kid. He's a great student. So um, again, along the lines uh, of of kids we're always looking for to add the program but particularly at the quarterback position is a kid that loves to compete and wants to be a leader and wants the pressure on his plate up next the second quarterback taken in this class coach from burlington north carolina east guilford high school 6'4 210 pound kamel smith yes uh he he is one one great athlete um he's he's a little bit raw as a quarterback but he still threw for over over 2,000 yards and 22 touchdowns as a junior and he ran for 639 yards um he's a three-time all-conference player um he's on one of the better AU teams in the area he, he's he's just a tremendous tremendous athlete and again as football continues to progress and you're seeing it going from high school to college and now all the way to the NFL that um Kids like him have, have become more the norm at the quarterback position. Just you're, you're taking your best athlete and you're putting their high school's been doing that forever. And now we start doing a college, now you're seeing the NFL. And, and what a weapon it is when you have a kid that can really run the football as well as throw the football. Uh, and he's, he's a big physical kid, so we're, we're super excited. We got, we got on him a little bit later. He wasn't a kid that had been to one of our junior days. Um, but type of person we're looking for, type of character, type of work ethic, type of student. And then again, I've always said, when you get a great basketball player and a great football player in high school, they've almost always panned out for me. I'm always looking for those multi-sport athletes and, and not just play and sit the bench, but somebody that excels and plays. And um, typically those kids are, are, are the cream of the crop and uh, we're, we're pretty excited to add him to our program. You know, we talk uh, all the time about getting the best athletes available and the positions you're looking for. Two quarterbacks this year uh, on on the roster just looking for the best athletes? Well, it was, it was more fixing the roster. We only have right. three scholarship quarterbacks on our roster right now. Yeah. So it was it – was, we went in the year and Coach Kale let all the quarterbacks know that we're going to take two, and it really wasn't any other reason than you have three. We want to be at five. 
uh, we, we, you know, you have a little bit of attrition and next thing you know, you're, you got three scholarship quarterbacks with Brett, AJ and, and, and Avion. So we wanted to get that number back to five. You have an injury or anything, you're down to four and that's, that's as low as you want to go. And a few short, a few short years ago, we played our fourth guy in some games. So, uh, this year was, you know, going in was a little scary. Obviously we didn't, it wasn't an issue. We only played three games, but, uh, we just want to get our numbers back at the quarterback position, right? That's why we were taking multiple kids. On to the running back taken in this year's class from St. Louis, Missouri. He's 5'8", 185 pounds, Derez Snyder. Explosive athlete, you know, Dismet is one of the top programs in St. Louis. Uh, as you know, St. Louis has become a better and better place for us as we've gone on. Obviously, Brett Gabbert from St. Louis, and um, we're getting more and more kids out of that area. Um, there's a lot of good football there. Um, and, and as you you know you get a good player from there, then it springs on to get more good players. So uh, really explosive. Um, you know he had a season like a lot of us. I was choppy, start, stop, start, stop. But um, really, really, really high end talent for us, and uh, can do a lot of things out of the backfield. He'll be able. He's explosive enough to block. He can catch the football. Uh, but he's really good north and south runner. When he puts his foot in the ground, he gets from zero to 100 in a hurry. So uh, we're excited to add him. We, we think just another explosive in the long line of really good tailbacks we've had here. Very good. Now, three wideouts uh, signed their national letter of intent today, Coach. And we'll go right back to St. Louis, Missouri. O'Fallon Christian High School is the home for the six foot, 180 pound wide receiver, Angelo Butts. Yeah, Angelo. Uh, <laughs> Uh, of all, everybody dealt with stuff in 2020, and Angelo was no different. He transferred high schools. Um, he was ruled ineligible to play um, based on transfer, not not based on anything academically. Um, and then you're already dealing with COVID and all this summer. And it was just, I, I thought the, the, the most impressive thing about him is, I thought it'd just be devastating. It was devastating for the kid. And I just thought, okay, he's going to be, you know, he didn't blink. like. He decides, you know, it was week one, they're going to get him eligible, no eligible. Week two, they're going to get him eligible. Week three, they're going to, it was one of those, he's waiting week week to week. And then then finally it was ruled he's not going to be eligible. The next week he joins a soccer team. And, and it hadn't played soccer since a little kid, but he just wanted to do something. And the soccer coach knew and said, hey, can you come on? This is at a new school his senior year. He goes out, he scores a bunch of goals. The team has a really good finish to the season. The soccer coach is raving about what a great kid, man. And he just wanted to compete and do something. He was sick of sitting around like we all are. And it just showed a lot about the kid, but he is lightning fast. He can really, really, really run. And again, when you're looking at receivers, you're looking at, you know, to add pass catching, route running, speed, size, all of it. We filled the speed quotient with him and you want to get one, you know, one really fast kid a year. And this kid's a, a kid that can be a big play threat for us. Very good. Back to Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio and Ursuline High School. One of five, at least five in this class that are early enrollees. We'll talk more about that later on. Wide receiver, 6'185 pound Matthew Reardon. Yeah, coach's son, um, really excited. He had everybody in our league. Um, uh, comes from a great program, Youngstown Ursuline. is one of the top programs in the state. Uh, versatile, he can kind of do it all at receiver. He's played safety. Um, really a good route runner, really good with his hands, really competitive, really understands the game. Um, like I said, you're looking for speed, you're looking for size, and, and you're looking for, and again, Butts gives us the, the, the blinding speed. Reardon gives us more of the Sorensen type, a guy that just runs routes, gets open, is tough, does all the dirty work. So uh, we like not only the class at receiver, but also the versatility. They're all a little bit different players. They're all fantastic players in their own right, but they all kind of bring something else to the table. So we're excited to get man. We're cer certainly excited to get him mid-semester and get him going. Absolutely. And the uh, final uh, offensive skill player that we'll talk about today from Grand Rapids, Michigan and Catholic Central High School. Uh, you, you got the speed guy, you got the slot guy that runs route, and you got the guy that can go up and get it. It looks like 6'4", 195 pound Jace Williams. Yeah, Jace, you talk about catch radius. We always like his, his highlights are pretty darn amazing when you talk about him going to get footballs that are clearly outside the framework of his body and, and balls on most kids. He tracks it tremendously down the field, um, and then he can jump and he can go get and he can twist and torque. So like I said, we got the speed, we got the, the kind of the all around guy, and then we've got the guy that can go make plays. Uh, played for a good friend of mine, Todd Colster, one of the best programs in the state of Michigan, uh, multiple, multiple state champions. 
um, and, and does, you know, has been coached to do some things that we're going to continue to coach him because there's a really good, uh, Todd was my offense coordinator at Grand Valley back in the day as his high school coach. So he's one that had a lot of big offers. Um, things play out funny in recruiting sometimes. Um, some of the schools that he had that were really good offers filled up and, and Coach Izzy, Israel Wolfolk did a great job of staying with him. And then kind of when the dust settled, at one point it looked like we had no chance of this kid, but um, Coach Wolfolk stayed with him. And in the end, we had a chance to swoop in and get him. And it was a really good late get for us. Sounds great, Coach. And uh, there you have it, the offensive skill signees on this National Letter of Intent signing day. And uh, Coach, I ask you about the quarterbacks. Let, let's talk about the class in general and, you know, what you and your coaches kind of look at, with, especially with signing a large class, and in, in what do we take here, what do we take here, and, and what the needs are in trying to match everything position-wise. Yeah, and if you have a large class, typically you can take every position, which we did. You can take a little bit of, you know, you take some safeties, linebackers, D-line, and so you can, you're not limited. When you have a smaller class, you got to make some of those tougher decisions, which we might have to make next year. There may be some positions we don't take a kid next year, which again, you never want to get into, but with the new rules, it's, it may look that way, depending how it plays out. Um, and then we're looking just like we talk with, with receiver is versatility. And even at quarterback, we have, we have two, we took two different quarterbacks. There's a lot of different things we can do in our offense um, uh, structurally to, to benefit and, and, and let the kid play to strength. And then same thing at receivers. We're looking for, you know, size, strength, and speed, but you're also looking for the jobs. Okay, what kind of safety? We took a bigger safety. Maybe we'll take a smaller, quicker safety. We took more of a physical run and hit safety. Uh, let's take more of a cover safety. So you're not only looking numbers to say, hey, we need two safeties this year. We need three outs, but you're also looking, okay, in our offense, do you want three guys that are exactly the same or you want some variation? And just like you mentioned with the wideouts, like, hey, you kind of got a Jack Sorensen type who's kind of the jack of all trades and pretty good at everything. We've got a guy that's maybe a little raw, but it's got unbelievable speed. And we think that we can develop into a complete receiver. And then you got the six foot four kid that you already know in the red zone in some one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's going to be, if you watch his high school tape, he's going to be a nightmare. So you're looking for numbers, but then you're also looking for that versatility to fill the jobs that you need done. Today's show is brought to you by Ohio's 529 College Advantage Plan. You know, with all of the problems that 2020 has brought, imagine trying to find a spot for 100 plus athletes to have locker room space, weight training space, medical treatment space, training space. It's a tough thing to imagine. Miami, though, has been able to do it thanks to the size and the amenities that are the Athletic Performance Center and the Dalk Indoor Sports Center. Robert Tremblay, the video director of Miami football, put together this tour of what Miami did to be COVID ready. Thanks to our top tier facilities, the Miami football team was able to carry out a properly socially distant football season. Going into this unprecedented year, the Miami Redhawks were able to use their immense space and amenities to provide a safe environment for all players and staff. For meeting spaces, the team was able to keep individual positions distant by dividing up the many meeting rooms in the Athletic Performance Center. Defense and offense were able to hold meetings at the same time before practice by establishing meeting spaces in the Dout Indoor Sports Center as well. The disc contained three screens and projectors to hold individual position meetings. Larger meetings for special teams or offense and defensive units were also held in the disc. The Dalk Indoor Sports Center became an absolute cornerstone of Miami's social distance plan. Inside the disc is a weight room where the team could hold workouts and lifts while still keeping plenty of space between racks. Training tables were also placed onto the other side of the indoor to create a safe, distant environment for player treatments and taping. In the end zone, a makeshift locker room was established to hold a large portion of the Miami football team. Players were split between the regular locker room and the disc locker room. On game days, the Dalk Indoor Sports Center also served as the team meeting space. As Coach Martin gave his pre-game, halftime, and post-game speeches, all in this location. A network of chairs and whiteboards was also placed in the area for individual positions to rest and meet with their coaches in pre-game and halftime. The Miami University Athletic Performance Center provided optimal conditions for such a unique year. The Players' Lounge was converted into a COVID testing center with Quest Diagnostics. 
The space and location allowed for an assembly line-like approach that kept testing efficient and safe. Modified seating in the team auditorium was used for staff and larger group meetings. The extra offices and staff meeting rooms allowed for every coach, intern, and GA to have their own workspace. The Mercy Health Training Room's size enabled players to still get treatment, cold tub time, and other medical assistance while remaining socially distant. Miami Football would like to thank all alumni and donors that helped fund these beautiful facilities. Without them, the Red Hawks would have never been able to pull this season off both safely and efficiently. And we are back and uh, on our National Letter of Intent Signing Day special, head coach Chuck Martin, along with me, Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. And uh, coach, we just saw the piece, uh, uh, great facilities that Miami University has and the adaptability of those uh, facilities was key. And, and not only, you know, being able to play the three games we did, but to practice or do anything really with the football program. Yeah, I remember back in, in July, it was it was kind of all of us got together and Doc Daly leading the charge, you know. But Daryl and, and and the strength coaches and Yoch and everybody, and we sat we sat, we came in here and we tried to say, okay, we were just learning all the protocols at that point, you know. So we had this long list of you can't do this and you can't do this, and if you do this, you have to do it this way. So one, you know, Miami's going to do things the right way. So it, it was never a question of how do we get around this protocol. It's like, okay, here's here's what they're telling us is how we, if we were allowed to do this, how we'll do it safely. So one, we're all on the same page. We're going to do it and, and, and keep everybody as healthy as we can. And then two, it's like, okay, what do we do now? So you're looking and there wasn't a lot of good options. They're talking about, you know, eight kids in a weight room at a time. Well, how do you train a hundred kids eight at a time that take 20 hours a day? Um, so we'd kind of brainstorm and we came up with some really good ideas. And then, you know, obviously David Saylor's fundraising um, from the time he got here um, and building the new facilities. If we would have been in the old facilities, we, we don't even get off the ground right. and we don't, we, I mean, it really, we want to get off the ground. It is, but because of the, the, the gun lock building is so big and so immense and our meeting rooms are so big and our team room so big and our player lounge is so big. And then with the David Dowk indoor sports center, we had all this other space. We really did a nice job of thinking outside the box. And, and really what we did is say, Hey, we're going to not, we're going to knock out all the contact tracing up front we're going to, if, if, if it's 15 minutes in close proximity without a mask, we're going to, we're going to take care of that. So basically we took all our meeting rooms. We, we got like, you know, 30% capacity, but we figured out, okay, maybe the, the old line can't meet in the old line room, but there, if we, if we go 30% capacity in the team room, that's plenty of space to meet safely, you know? So we kind of, took all our meeting rooms and we, we knocked them down to size, but because they're so big, we still had big enough spaces. We, we, we took our players lounge and turned it into the, the, the quest testing site um, where our players lounge was off limits, but it became our, our testing facility, which was awesome. And then we took David Dowk's uh, indoor sports center. We still used that as a practice field. We moved 20, 20 some racks of weights in there so we could, we could social distance and lift, which you can't do in a normal size weight room. But then we took, half our training room and moved it out there because we didn't want our training room to be overburdened. Then we took um, a bunch of other recovery stuff and put out there. Then we took two thirds of our locker room and moved it into the indoor so that we could have a third of the locker room and have people dressed in there safely. And we'd have two thirds of the people dressed in the other locker room safely. So because of what, what the Miami alums and David Saylor and, and everyone that raised the money for the facilities created a, a pretty amazing thing that, that we felt like, we not only could keep doing things more normally than maybe some folks, but we know we are doing safer than anybody in the country, which is, which is what the goal was. Absolutely. This is the National Letter of Intent Signing Day brought to you by Ohio's 529 College Advantage Plan. And uh, let's get back to the athletes here, Coach. Defensive skill is what we'll talk about. And from LaSalle High School, just down the road in Cincinnati, Ohio, defensive back 6'1", 185 pound, Jamar Monday. Yeah, J. Mars, uh, obviously, like you talked with, with Hassan, of getting a kid from LaSalle. Um, uh, and, uh, great, great program. Huge games all year long. They play the best of the best in Cincinnati, Ohio, Cleveland, uh, Indianapolis. It's one they have a hard time. No one wants to schedule them, so they play everybody. And then they get in the playoffs and uh, always, if they don't win the state title, they're always knocking on the door. 
Coach McLaughlin does a great job. We have a great tie with Coach McLaughlin because he was the offensive coordinator, quarterback coach at Moeller when Gus Ragland played at Moeller. Um, so we're already indebted to Coach McLaughlin for helping helping us get Gus. Um, but then, you know, obviously getting the kid out of the program. And Jay Mars is a great athlete. And, and it, for a corner that can run and cover, he's also a kid that will really strike you. Um, uh, much like Manny, you know, and again, you don't need all your corners to be run hit guys, but you need that boundary guy who's going to be involved in a lot of the tackling action and be a tackler. So we're excited about him and, and the, his ability to run and hit and then his ability to cover and then obviously just a great athlete from a great program. Another Cincinnati athlete from Winton Woods High School, 6'1", 185 pounder, another one of those early enrollees, Caleb Tubbs. Yeah, and Caleb, again, Winton Woods, another we it's one of those problems we got a great relationship with Whitten Woods. Um, we love their program. I think they really like our program. They've got tons and tons of talent. We haven't been able to land a kid for, you know, and everyone's like, wait, well, you got to recruit Whitten Woods. We love recruit Whitten Woods, you know, but we're, we're excited that we, we got Caleb this year. And again, it, and it's not from either way. Whitten Woods would have loved to send a kid here. It's not like they're they're not helping us. Like I said, we, we have a really strong relationship. This was just a year. It was the right player at the right time and the right fit. And, and, and like you said, another corner, we need some young cover guys coming in. We're going to lose some cover guys over the next year or two. Um, so we need some young cover guys to come in and maybe compete to be in the two deep right away. And then certainly a year from now, there'll be some spots. Uh, but again, okay, tremendous cover guy, great length, really nice athlete. We're going to get him at mid-semester. And again, we're getting him from a program that's played the best of the best. They played the who's who across, you know, they go to St. Louis and play CBC high school. They, they'll play anyone just to get games. So um, another kid that's played a really high level of competition and really excelled. Let's go down to the Bluegrass State, Louisville, Kentucky, DuPont Manual High School, 6'2", 190 pound defensive back, Elijah Blayton. Yeah, so uh, he just love his length, love his, love his ball skills. He's played some receiver. Uh, love his contact. He'll strike you with his chest. I'm always talking about kids that aren't head duckers or hit with their shoulders, but actually will chest you up and make a really solid form tackle. Um, we think we think we can really develop his speed. Um, we think he's going to be really big. He played junior at 172. He played abbreviated season this year at 190. I think this kid's going to weigh 210, 215 pounds and be be a really, really good player. Boundary safety. Uh, type in our defense. He's a 4.0 student. He's team captain. He's a guy that wants to make the check. So um, got him late in the process uh, and, and we're really excited about him. All right, staying there in the Bluegrass State, Belfry, Kentucky, Belfry High School, the DB 6'3", 200 pound, Brett Coleman. Yeah, again, another kid from a great program, Belfry. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get a tough kid. Brett's tougher than tough. He is He's a throwback. I always compare him to guys that he's never heard of. <laughs> I said, you remind me a lot of uh, Mike Curtis. And he's like, looks at me like, I have no idea. I go, no, he was like 30 years before you, but um, starting to show my age, but just plays quarterback on a triple option team, plays safety, uh, plays every snap, doesn't come off. Um, actually was a pretty darn good quarterback. I, I tell him like, cause you meet him, he doesn't have an offensive mentality, but to run the triple, you've kind of run it with the defensive mentality. So, uh, but length, ball skills will strike you. Again, kind of that boundary safety will backer mode for us, um, but love his length. And, and uh, again, I just, I'm so excited he's coming. He's so tough, loves to play, loves his teammates, like no excuses. So definitely a throwback, uh, definitely a guy we're really excited again. Adding toughness, adding run and hit ability to your defense is always a good thing. Chicago, Illinois product up next from Phillips Academy, six foot, 195 pound defensive back, D. Pierce. Yeah, and, and this is this one I start sounding like a broken record, but again, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's what we say on defense. Find guys that like to run and hit. If you find a bunch of guys that like to run and hit, then find yourself a couple cover guys because you got to cover some people too. And sometimes the cover guys don't run and hit as good, but uh, Davion is just. He's a throwback. Like he loves to play and he'll hit anything that moves. And he don't care where, if it's ST, if, if you told him to play nose guard, linebacker, safety, corner, he'd play anywhere. He loves the game of football and he loves contact. And again, the, that's what great defense do. They swarm to the ball and they get after you. And um, he, he doesn't have the length as some of the other guys. He's got some really nice explosiveness. He can really close ground. Um, I think he'll be a, a nickel, nickel, 
type linebacker for us. He'll be, I think he'll be a great edge blitzer. I think he'll be great in our third down packages. Um, so just can get from point A to point B. And when he gets there, he's, it's not fun to be on the other end. So uh, I think we did a really good job. I think our defensive staff and our whole staff did a really good job with these defensive recruits of just keep increasing our length, keep increasing our athleticism, and cre- keep increasing our contact ability. Very good. That's the defensive backfield, so to speak. Now let's move to the linebackers here. Uh, 6'1", 225-pounder from McMurray, Pennsylvania, and Peters Township High School, Corbin Hondru. Yeah, another great program, Peters Township in, in, in Pennsylvania, in the Pittsburgh area. And, uh, again, Corbin, smart, tough. He's going to be a captain here someday, most likely. Great student, played fullback, played H-back, um, caught the winning touchdown pass and a huge upset in the playoffs. Uh, on a slant route, uh, will be a leader, will be a signal caller. Um, Coach Nowinski loves this kid. I love this kid. And again, he's he's a throwback. He's a football guy. He loves to play, loves to compete, but he's such a good teammate. Like he has these monster games and I call him up and I, I want to pat him on the back and tell him how great he was. And all he wants to do is talk about the team and how the offense has really come together and really how hard they compete. And Johnny did good and it's just, it's again, it's who we recruit at Miami and it's what makes coming here so special. I always tell the recruits, we have all these great things from this incredible a- academics to the incredible alumni base, to the incredible network, to this beautiful campus, to uptown, to the winningest tradition at NFL. And I said, but the best thing here is the people in the locker room. And, and because we have all those great things, you can attract not only the best football players, but you can attract the best students and the best human beings. And I tell every recruit, the best thing about Miami is those kids in the locker room. And it's, it's amazing. And, you know, we're adding more kids just like that. And we couldn't be more excited. Corbin's coming. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, back to Cincinnati, Ohio, Winton Woods High School, number two from Winton Woods, uh, linebacker 5'11", 190 pound, Dalen Law. Yeah, we're trying to make up for some lost time because <laughs> we, uh, we were trying and trying and trying. Then again, uh, Dalen, not that long. Crazy explosive and crazy high contact player. You know, unfortunately, he missed he missed this this year. Except we got to play the last game uh, with with a knee injury. But it's he got to play the last game. He's coming out and everything looks good. Um, but his junior tape was unbelievable. And he just he just again when you see guys that run and strike and run and strike people and play with such passion, that's that's this whole list of defensive guys. And uh, again, we we were disappointed for him that he didn't get to play this year. But we're really happy with the progress. The, the knees made and, and, and that he did get back in there for that last game and, and get a little bit of taste of his senior year. So we're certainly excited. His older brother's an NFL player. He comes from a, just a, a great line of great athletes in that family. And again, we're looking we're looking for him. I, I think this is a kid, if he comes in and can play minimally ST right away and make a major impact. And one more linebacker to talk about here, and that is from Greenwood, Indiana, Center Grove High School, 6'3", 200-pound Jackson shot. So we got our length again that we love. Yeah, you love. We love at every position. I love the long guys. We got the program. Center Grove is as tough a program as there is in the state of Indiana, but probably as there is in the whole country. Um, You love to get kids from Center Grove. Um, Really versatile because he does some nice things coverage-wise, even though he's a longer kid. uh, Does really good things in run support. So... Uh, just another kid that we think uh, is very versatile on our defense is going to be a great SD guy, and they win the state title. And um, again, you can't, could never get it. It's another program we're trying to get kids out of Center Grove, Center Grove, and we finally got a kid out of this year. So we're super excited. Um, comes from a great family. Again, another throwback. Like he just plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. He loves playing football, and he loves the physical aspect of the game of football. He loves the mental aspect of the game of football. And I think he's going to be able to do a lot of jobs on our defense and a lot of jobs on our ST. Very good. There you go. The defensive skill positions that have signed their national letter of intent to attend Miami University coming up in the fall. And Coach, uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about my guys, the big guys uh, here in just a bit. But, uh, you know, 2020, this season was not what anybody wanted it to be. But, you know, as you mentioned, uh, just to get out there and play football, we're going to see the highlight package from uh, 2020 here in a moment. But just to get out there and play football, uh, you can see the joy in the eyes of anybody associated with the program, much let alone the players who were just dying to get out there and play. But you, the other coaches, myself, anybody associated with the program, it, it was just so great to get out there and be able to at least do something that was back to normal, back to what you love to do. 
Yeah, and, and obviously we only got three games in, but we'd love to have the third quarterback against Buffalo. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm okay with the first half against Buffalo. I thought it looked like a pretty normal uh, Miami Buffalo game, and then obviously they they played really well in the third, and we didn't. Um, and, and put the game away. And that was disappointing for all of us and um, credit to them. And, and we didn't get the job done as players or coaches. Um, obviously the ball state was a great win. We opened the season. Um, we're down in a game. We're already down two tailbacks. You're down Bester and Tyree. You're down Andrew Homer. So we're not at full strength going into the season. Uh, then you lose your quarterback in the second quarter. And it's not just you lose your quarterback and you lose a really good player in Brett Gabbert. But when you lose your quarterback, it kind of takes the wind out of your team. Like it, it goes right through the sidelines, right through your fan base. Uh, and then you lose Davion Johnson at the end of the first half who's having a big day. And then to watch our kids in the second half just take that game over and A.J. Mayer – Mayor AJ Mayer comes in and plays just just how we hoped he would play and how we knew he was capable of playing, and really does a phenomenal job. Uh, and then everyone else just step up in the game all the way down to Ryan McWood's huge interception and Zach Khan seals a win. And it, we knew it was a great win because when you're you're we know in the MAC there's so many teams that are so close. You're down and you're almost out when you have all these kids out hurt and it, like no momentum. And to watch our kids and coaches respond now you move it five weeks later and that's ball state's only loss right we beat we beat a team that's playing in the mac championship game with our backup quarterback our fourth team tailback our backup tight end, like and we were down 13 points at the time like we were it wasn't like when all those guys went out we had a lead and held on we were so turned out to be even more of a special win that we can continue to build our program then obviously we played a great game against akron who wasn't one of the better teams in our league but we played phenomenally so um you know i said we feel pretty good about Great about the Ball State game. Great about the Akron game. Feel good about the first half of the Buffalo game. So there's still plenty of to grow and to build on. We got a ton of kids coming back. Um, we are loaded and young this year. This year doesn't count. So we're going to be loaded and young next year. And recruiting is getting better and better. We, again, 0-22, 4-26 in league play. We've come so far. We're still building, Bake. Like, we're mm-hmm. not done here at Miami. Mm-hmm. We are. We are. We went from non-competitive, embarrassing, then we brought a little respectability back. Then we got competitive, Bake, and we started getting in games. We couldn't win them. You know you called them. Like, we went from you couldn't play with the best teams, then we could play with the best teams. We couldn't find a way to beat them, and a lot of it just we didn't believe we could beat them yet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, we, and then we learned how to win, and then we got over the hump. And then in 2019, we bring the MAC championship home, and we're the, one of the youngest teams in the country. Yeah, this year was abbreviated and kind of a, kind of a bonus year, but – we're still in such a great position and we're still hungry and we're like, we're already telling our kids like next year is going to be the best year it's been at Miami in a long, long time. Yeah. And we've got some unbelievable opportunities and we've got the right nucleus and we're still recruiting. So even though you win the conference title and everybody thinks you take your foot off the gas, we're certainly not. And we don't think the best Miami football team, you know, in recent memory you've seen yet. We think we're going to be better next year. And we think we're going to be better two and three years down the road. Head coach Chuck Martin talking with us here. The National Letter of Intent Signing Special is brought to you by Ohio's 529 plan. And uh, we will continue with more in a moment. But as we've been talking about, 2020 had some great highlights with it. We'll take a look at those right now.
And we're back on our final segment here of the National Letter of Intent signing special for 2020. Uh, a large class of Red Hawks, uh, future Red Hawks, signing their National Letter of Intent to play football at Miami University. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. And, of course, head coach Chuck Martin joining me via Zoom. And, uh, Coach, uh, my kind of guys here, the big guys, uh, uh, offensive and defensive line, what – Obviously, size, strength, those things. What are the other key things that you're looking for when you go look for an offensive or defensive line? Well, start with the offensive line. We're always looking for upside. Um, that's the one position, you know, everybody says the tape don't lie, and I'm a big believer in if you're not a really, really good high school player, um, you're not going to be a really good college player. The offensive line, like Tommy Doyle was a projection. He was a defensive lineman. He had great length, great flexibility. He was undersized, but we knew we could put, with our strength program, we could put a lot of muscle on him. And then we, we, we saw a vision of what Tommy could become. Mm -hmm. And we thought he had the work ethic and the love for the game, and he certainly did. And then, obviously, we've seen it progress through the years of what he's become. So the offensive line, we're always looking, not always for who's the exact best player today, but who do we think is going to be the best player two, three years down. And a lot of it is developmental because – a lot of those longer kids, now they're bigger than ever and they come in at 300 pounds, which is amazing. But they typically have a more of an upside than maybe other positions. Um, the kid that runs 10-6 probably is not going to run 10-2 some days, probably going to run. He's probably closer to being tapped out. Where uh, Defensive line just depends inside or outside. If you're looking for the interior guys, um, obviously you're looking for size to hold up inside, but you're, you're looking for hand strength. Um, you're looking for some nasty in there because you're going to take double team after double team after double team. Um, and, and you're looking for explosive. The edge guys come in all shapes and sizes. We're a perfect example. We got Ben Kimpler, who's been a tremendous player and was having, you know, for three games this year, was having his breakout year um, mm -hmm. at defensive end. He was playing the game at a different level. Um, but he's that six foot five athlete that we kind of put on some weight and we're still putting on weight. Uh, but then you also have shorter guys like Lonnie Phelps. We recruited him, he was 190 pounds when we recruited him. Mm -hmm. but he can really run like the wind. So uh, when you get to the outside guys, we'll, we'll take that longer kid that can use his levers and, and use his length to his advantage, but we'll also take the shorter, more explosive kid that can use his speed to his advantage. So um, that's kind of what we're looking for when we look at the guys in the trenches. And, you know, this, th these are positions on both sides of the football here, Coach, that, you know, we see it in the, in, in the skill positions, but I, I see it more in the linemen that – you know, in, in the past, I, I don't know, 10 years or so, whatever it's been, that strength and conditioning has really gotten taken hold in the high schools, that these guys are just coming in. There, there was a difference a while ago between big and ready to play Division One college football. These guys are coming in pretty much ready to play college football as far as their strength and conditioning. They may be 300 pounds, but they're ready to go. Yeah, and the, the, the amazing thing is, there was a time and not too, too long ago that like, Hey, the big, the big offensive line, they're pretty sloppy. Even in the yeah, afternoon yeah. Looked out there. And like you said, the strength and conditioning has come so far, even at the high school level. And then the nutrition piece has come so far. It used to be that the offensive linemen, they just ate whatever they want. They didn't care. And you look at, you look at offensive linemen nowadays, they're, you know, yeah, they're big and yeah, they got maybe a little bit of a belly on, but they're pretty, they're pretty lean and they're, they're more athletic and they carry their body weight way different. You know, they, they're not looking just to be big and fat anymore. They're looking, they're looking to be athletic. They're looking to be strong. They're looking to have that flexibility. So when, when strength and conditioning really took hold, a lot of times the offensive line, they just want to lift. You know, they just want to get big and lift and eat. And where now you watch our, our offensive linemen, you know, they're doing yoga. They do flexibility stuff. They're eating the right way. They're, you know, yeah, they weigh 320 pounds, but they're still pretty lean and pretty athletic dudes. So just, just like you said, as the strength and condition nutrition has changed, they've kind of were the last ones to really, but they're really bought in and it, and it makes a difference. And just, you're talking about 310 pound kids that, that look good, that look yeah. athletic. Yeah, and it makes a difference in injuries as well when, when you're really talking about it. Let's uh, move into the recruiting class. First in the offensive line, an early enrollee from Plum, Pennsylvania and Plumboro High School, 6'6", 300-pound, Evan Azara. Yeah, and again, kind of what we're looking for. We love that length. We, we are, he's already 300, but he's got, he's got a lot of uh, uh, filling out to still do. Um, he really does. And again, he, he won't change his body weight that, that much, but he'll change, he'll keep getting building his muscle mass. Um, really athletic kid, loves to play. Um, 
is amazing because we're talking in the summer and who knows Pennsylvania is even going to play them. and then they finally I remember talking to him said hey we get to play and it was like wow what an awesome deal and then then he kind of had the storybook senior they have the first first conference champs and I don't know how many years but a lot of years at Plum High School then the first undefeated season I think ever in in school wow. history and then first time district champs in I think the history of the school so uh coach Morgan and, and Evan and the whole crew there like they just had that year that every week no one expected they kind of they they weren't very good for a long time and then all of a sudden the COVID year and again that's when people say why why did we try to play that's why you try to play like Though, not just Evan, but those coaches, that community, like the whole community was going crazy over their football team, which they hadn't really experienced that in a very long time, if at all. And in, that's why we do what we do, to create memories, to create create things that, that help us grow as people. And so he was part of an awesome and um, really, really, really good football player. We're really excited he's an early enrollee, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Another early enrollee from Lafayette, Indiana, McCutcheon High School, offensive lineman, 6'6", 300 pound, Colby Borders. Yeah, and again, I always talk about those multiple sport athletes and Colby's one. Colby's a real good baseball player. Not not what you're thinking when you say O-line, but again, when you right. see, when, when you have a kid that big, that's also good at baseball, you're, it makes you shake your head. Um, and, and, and Colby is. Colby's just, he's a good athlete. And he's, he, he like a lot of those multiple sports, he thinks he's a skill guy. You know what I mean? He's, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I can play first base and I can run it. I can steal base. So, but again, those are your, those are your best linemen, you know, that have those that, because it is amazing what some of these big kids can do nowadays and that they are very, they're not just big, they're very functional athletes. Um, and, and, and we're excited to get Colby here and get him going big, strong, athletic, and, um, Loves to play, great kid, tons of energy, um, tons of tons of energy. He's going to bring a lot to the table when he gets to Miami. You know, you talk about those multi-sport athletes, the early enrollees, team captains. I mean, you know, you look for those things every year, and uh, you know, you, you're just you just go out and find them. I, I you know, I, I don't envy the job, but I mean, there are certain qualities that that you see on in almost every one of these athletes that have one or all of those qualifications. Yeah, and everybody's everybody's different, and everybody values different things. And you, when you talk about a culture of a program or what the locker rooms like, it's there's not one way to do it. It's we talk about this all the time. Like every, it's 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 your school, your personality, and the thing like the thing we say like one of the things we're proudest of here at Miami. Like we took over, we were in the graveyard. Like it was it wasn't fun. You know, my first two years, it wasn't fun to go to games. I didn't look forward to Saturday. I didn't. I tell you and Terry and the boys, like, I don't know how you do it. Like, I'm sitting there during the games thinking about, like, how are they calling this? Like, it is – it's hopeless. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then what we didn't flinch on was who Miami is as a university and how could we build a football team that would – that would show what Miami really is all about. And then who we are, like we believe in character. We believe in kids that want to work. We believe in unselfishness. And again, everybody says those are clean, like everybody says, mm -hmm. but we find the guys, like you said, and part of it is like you said, we're looking for those team. You didn't become team captain in high school. And we may take a team captain that maybe is a little less talented than a kid that wasn't team captain. All right. And again, just because at Miami and our program, we value that. And we, we won a conference championship a year ago because we have tremendous athletes here at Miami. But the thing that put us over the top was the character, the intelligence, the unselfishness of our football team. And again, I said it right after the game mm -hmm. when they said why I was choked up after the game. I said, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the character of those people over there. That's what got it. Like, and that's why we're an underdog all the time. That's why no one thought we could beat Central Michigan because right. they thought it was a trend. They underestimate how much work ethic and character and grit plays in this world. And it's not just football, it's in life. And we get kids. And like you say, every year you find these, it's not by accident. We find these kids. We're looking for those kids. And again, I say the same thing at this thing show. We could have taped the first show <laughs> because it's the truth. It is. It is. That, you yeah. know, we have 20 kids and I keep saying, I, like I said, I sound like a, but these kids are great athletes. Trust me. They, we didn't recruit kids that we didn't think can play at a very high level. So we're not diminishing but we believe in that other stuff and we don't bend on that other stuff. And that's why I keep saying that kids, just a great kid and he's going to compete and he's going to bring positive energy. And we're wrong. Sometimes we get kids in here and they're, they're, they don't do it. And they don't typically last very long at Miami. It's just the way it is. <laughs> Let's move on with a more offensive lineman. This one from Westerville, Ohio and Westerville central high school, six, eight, 300 pound Will Jados. 
Yeah, no, down in, in, in another program in, in Columbus, one of the top programs in Columbus. And uh, a place we have a great relationship with the head coach and we've been we've been trying to get kids out of there and he's been trying to get kids here and this is a year you get a big strong athletic offense alignment he's he's this kid and again you know uh hard to find kids that he's a little more polished he's he's got a little more some kids were trying to put a little more mass on he's got a lot of mass i think he can come in and and do some things for us right away and compete and and, and help our help us out with at least our depth right away so we're, we're we're extremely excited very very confident kid very competitive um like i always say i never met a great player that didn't think they're great he is a, he's a very confident young man and he has a belief in his ability and he, and he should because he's a tremendously talented kid very good from bridgeville pennsylvania and south fayette high school another 6 8 300 pounder ryan o'hare yeah he did coach barnett did a great job with this one this one's we kind of filled up at old line he kept recruiting him kept recruiting kept telling him that hey hang in there things have a way of working out and then just just the way recruiting works out there was an opportunity late um you know he he wanted to probably come to miami you know in the spring but we had filled up at offensive line and and, and we we don't play games we don't overcommit and then pull the will out from kids and um that happened to kids you know earlier today that they were you know this weekend they didn't have a scholarship all of a sudden out of the blue for whatever made up reason we don't do that so Credit to him and his family. Credit, credit to Coach Barnett for staying with him. And when the opportunity, uh, we sealed the deal in a, in a couple days. And again, it's hard to find six eight late blooming kid, a uh, kid we've had our eye on, a kid we think has a tremendous upside. Not a finished product, not necessarily a guy we're looking to come in and you know change the world tomorrow, but a kid we think uh, future is 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 tremendously bright. Move over to the defensive side from Detroit, Michigan, Oak Park High School, six five two hundred thirty, Marlon Dawson Jr. Yeah, uh, really talented. And again, had a, had a tough year. They've been hit with COVID like the rest of us and on and off and on and off. And then he got turf toe and had a mid. They finally get to play and he's got turf toe and can't play, but um, lost one of his good friends in an accident, um, had a really tough fall. And just, just a great kid with a huge heart. Um, Plays for a Hall of Fame coach, Coach Carter, uh, one of the legendary coaches in the in the state of Michigan. Uh, same same high school as where Junior McMullen came from. Um, coach Carter is one of my all time favorite coaches out there. Um, so we're getting a great kid um, with a great upside that that's got a great future here and can be a dominant dominant player for us on the edge on our defense. And who knows if he grows enough to to play inside someday, but he's going to be a big, strong kid, and he's twitchy, and he's got all the tools, and him and Coach Whitlow is going to be a really good combination for us. Very good. Defensive lineman from Louisville, Kentucky, Ballard High School, 6'3", 233-pound lineman, and an early enrollee, Taryn Hearn. Yeah, we, we love this kid. He's, you know, reminds me a little bit of Lonnie, explosive, um, unselfish, will do any job. Um, really strong on the edges junior year they were short inside so he had to play inside for their abbreviated season and you know he didn't care he'll do whatever job um work ethic much a lot like Lonnie Lonnie just works and works and works and works and works and it's just kind of who this kid reminds me of um fell in love with him over COVID because every day he's posting something on social media and it's pushing a car and it's like it's not at the gym it's like any which way this kid could get a workout in um comes from a great family, comes from an awesome program. Um, and I just, again, we're looking for competitive kids and that's what's been the heartbeat of our program, how we've turned this thing around and how we're gonna stay at the top. So uh, love everything about this kid. And I think he's gonna, he's gonna add a lot to that defensive front. And one more athlete to talk about here on our National Letter of Intent signing special for 2020 from Des Moines, Iowa. Coach, let's talk about 6'4", 250 pound defensive lineman, Nasser Washington. Yeah. Valley High School, again, one of the top, top programs. <laughs> Ask anybody in Iowa, they know of Valley Valley High School and, and that program, the job the job they do. Um, so again, you get a kid that's been coached, he's, 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 he's used to winning and, and there's pressure on winning there. You have to win. And then, so those expectations, you don't have to breed into them. I mean, they, they come with those expectations that you're gonna win. And that's part of why those kids, now it's harder early to get those kids to come because we weren't winning. Now that you're winning, it's, it's a lot easier to get kids that wanna keep winning. Um, really great length, really good athlete, can play, can play stand-up, could play outside backer, can play a 3-4 edge guy, could certainly put his hand on the ground and play defensive end. 
Um, we think he's got a huge upside of growth. We think he could be a three technique someday. So um, a lot of versatility here, a lot of athletes, athleticism. I always talk about when you get a good athlete on the O or D line, it usually shows pretty early. So um, again, really excited about Nasir. Um, he's a really good player. He's a high contact player. He's a really smart player. Um, and uh, we think he'll fit in really well on our defense. Very good. Interestingly enough, we've talked about 21 athletes here today, Coach. And as we move to 2021, uh, spring football coming up here before too long, we hope. Uh, what lies ahead for this team as you get ready for uh, next year and what we hope will be a normal year? Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five of these athletes already coming in on campus. Yeah, and – Again, it's it, no one was ready for this year. We, we've had to be fluid. We got what we could get out of this year, obviously. Um, but we're really excited about 2021. We got a great nucleus kids coming back. And we, we think we're primed to make another nice jump um, and be – we like our non-league schedule. We wish we had more home games, but we like our non-league schedule. Uh, we don't have the league schedule. We kind of know who we're going to play. And um, I think, you know – we're looking for growth in 2021. Like we talked earlier on the show, like we, we feel like this has been a, the progression that we said when we got here, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it right. If we do it right, it's going to take a little time where you don't go from how bad we were. You built it up. And, and I, I remember talking to sale, like we got to, when do you think we're going to win? I said, we got to get competitive first. Like that was the whole deal. Like we're going to, mm -hmm. and then again, about, about year three, you could say, Hey, we could play with anybody in this league. You call it like, no one's no one's taking us out behind the woodshed anymore. We're gonna we're gonna be in every game. And then I was like, okay, well, they can't win a close game. I'm like, no, we can't because in the fourth quarter we don't believe. You know, we don't. We we gotta now. We that's the next step. And we talked about it and we focused on it. We prepared for it. And guess what? We had the right kids that we recruited. And bam, next you know we're starting to win close games. We haven't stopped. You know what I mean, we haven't lost a close game in a long time. And then it was then then it was now we got to win that conference. We're getting close. We got a co-champ. We're getting a bowl games. We've been bowl eligible, but can we can we finish the thing off? And then last year we finished the thing off. This year we thought was going to be you know that next step. Obviously nothing, no spring ball, no fall camp, three games. Obviously it's it's it it, it wasn't what we had hoped. But again, that's now you move on. But we're looking for again our recruiting keeps getting better. We're getting a better player. Can we take the next step as a program and keep building this thing to, again, we want to stay one of the top programs in the MAC, but can we start getting those big non-league wins? You know, can we go out there and beat a big team? We think we're getting to the point where we can do that, and we think that's the next step in the progression. And then can we continue to be, you know, one of the dominant teams where 26 and 9 in the MAC over the last five seasons, which is the best record in the MAC, and we're very proud of having the best record in the MAC over five seasons. That's the consistency you're looking for. You know, we're 24 and four when our starting quarterback starts and finishes a game. That's even even better record. Better. You know, we've won 24 of our last 28 MAC games when our starting quarterback start and finish a game. Now this year was different. We brought in AJ, and we still had a chance to win, which was pretty good. And that just can can again continue to show the growth but we're looking to put our foot on the gas we're more excited about Miami football it's not like hey we got to the MAC championship game and now that's as good as it can get we we want to keep getting better and there, that we can become better football team uh in a lot of different facets and I know our coaches and players are really excited to do that well I know that this class can certainly uh help to get you there coach uh great looking class congratulations on it and uh, uh looking forward to uh, spring football here in a, in a couple of months yeah, me too, no doubt. Head coach Chuck Martin joining us, and that'll do it for our National Letter of Intent signing special. Brought to you by Ohio's 529 Plan, College Advantage. I'm Steve Baker, the voice of the Red Hawks. Thanks for watching.